Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina and today's video is probably my most requested video that I get both here and on Instagram and I am taking you guys along for a homeschool day in the life. Today is a typical day. We're not going anywhere, anywhere really special. We're just going to be at home. It's a Monday. We've had a lot of ups and downs and going away and all the different things. So we are getting back into our routine today, taking it slow. Stay in the Life is also part of a collaboration hosted by my friend Lindsay over at Love Them Well. So be sure to check out her channel. I've linked it in the description box below, as well as the playlist to a bunch of other moms sharing their summer homeschool day in the lives. So I am starting out my day straightening up the playroom because I like to reset it before they start their day. And also because I actually like to read and pray in this swing before everyone gets up when I get a chance. So I am actually going to swap out our character cards really quick from September and Code for the character traits that we're going to work on this week. Because I just realized we needed to swap them out. And then I'm putting up our library books that we just got yesterday before starting to read a chapter from my book, M is for Mama, which I am absolutely loving. Highly recommend it before I get a little bit of time in prayer. My little guy is the first one up and he loves to get this alone time with mama. He loves being the first one up. And it's super cute because he brought me the book that we've been reading upstairs during nap time one morning in Maine. And even though it's not a chapter book, it's a longer picture book. And so I've just been reading a couple pages at a time to him, my two-year-old and my six-year-old. And he really wanted to hear the way the story ended. And so he requested that I read the end to him this morning. So it was really sweet to get this time with him. And I loved that he was excited to hear about the rest of the book. He was a little disappointed though that the little girl did not find her tooth that she lost. Also, if you're wondering what's going on with my hair here and you haven't seen it on my Instagram, it is my Octa Curl. This is how I curl my hair with no heat and I will link it down below if you're interested. The next one up was my 14 year old and we just got some time to talk which was kind of nice before I go start our day and then I love that my oldest and my littlest boy have such a special relationship that they can take some time together before the day starts as well. And real life, this is the state of my living room this morning, so they will definitely be cleaning that up as part of our morning routine today. I'm just taking some time to make some lists and things that I want us to get to for the day and then things that I didn't write down that we did yesterday and really this time helps me to just kind of organize my thoughts before everyone is up but as you notice the next one up is my six-year-old and so we are one by one just jumping into the day next one up is my littlest and of course she wakes up exactly when i was going to start breakfast which is totally fine i have gotten used to being flexible in the moment when i need to and so I'm definitely taking the time to soak up the snuggles when they want them. Last but certainly not least, my 11-year-old is up. And this sweet boy has offered to make pancakes for everyone this morning. So that will help me out a lot. Super funny to me that now that I want to return this book to the library, everyone is super into it. Ooh. 
So while Jackson continues to make breakfast, Justice and Gia are cleaning up the living room and getting that taken care of so that when breakfast is ready, we can all have breakfast together and start our morning time. I'm putting our most recent favorite blend in the diffuser. It's eucalyptus and lemon. And so it's nice and refreshing and a great way to start the day, sort of energizing and fresh. My oldest is taking this few free minutes to read his Bible in peace while the youngest three are riding scooters on the back deck and waiting for breakfast. So I'm going to go ahead and feed my starter dough and I may or may not get around to baking something today. We'll see. So while Jackson finishes up making the pancakes, I'm just gonna help get the toppings together on a little platter to go outside with. And we just had a grocery order show up, so Justice is putting the groceries away while my youngest three are sorting some laundry and delivering them to people's bedrooms. We have, for a while now, stopped folding laundry all together unless it is getting directly put into a drawer and are simply sorting and delivering and then people can put their own laundry away and this has worked out really well for us. Let me know, do you guys fold laundry in your house? So I have our morning basket for outside pretty much ready. We do have a morning basket over there um, that we've somewhat abandoned since we've been doing a lot of our stuff outside. Um, boys are finishing up prepping our breakfast and we're gonna eat outside i started setting up the table out there so we'll do breakfast and morning time outside um, we'll do some devotions we're going to do some stretching with this summer yoga from our knowledge crate we're going to finish up this read aloud hopefully today that we've been working on for a while and then the main thing that we're doing as far as morning lessons go is our animal homes nature study from nature study club if you haven't been around well, I've mentioned Nature Study Club. I'll try to link the video down below where I go through this unit and plan it and prep it and do a flip through. Uh, I'll also link it down below if you're interested in the free trial because that ends soon. Um, but even if you miss the free trial, it's $12 a month and the stuff that you get is amazing. So we'll do that and then we'll probably break for like free time, snack, that kind of stuff before lunch. These pancakes came out so good and I am super hungry, so I cannot wait to eat and get started with our day. Okay, we are done with breakfast. I'm gonna make myself an iced coffee and we are jumping in now. This is my favorite go-to coffee right now. Just some oat milk, maple syrup, froth it and add some iced coffee into it. So we are starting out with our indescribable devotions today. If you're not familiar, they connect God with science and I always try to connect it with what we're learning when possible. Tardigrades are among the few animals that can be found both on the highest mountains and in the deepest sea. These tiny creatures are only about 1.5 millimeters long. I thought it was huge. This is going to be huge. No, they're tiny. Just slightly more than the thickness of a dime, but the tardigrade is fierce. No, like tiny, 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 tiny. 
Um, the thickness of a dime. Do so you know a dime? That's 10 cents. How thick it is? That's how thick they are. How big are they? They're teeny. Its mouth is full of dagger-like teeth, which is used to tear into algae and other tiny animals. Jumping from cliffs so high. God gave this little creature that you've probably never heard of everything it needs to survive. And how much more will God do for you, his most prized creation? In this world, you'll face troubles, temptations, and fears so fierce that you might think you can't survive. No, not right now. We're listening up. Listen. But you can because God is on your side. There's no trouble he can't handle, Matthew 19, 26. There's no temptation he can't help you defeat, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And there's no need to worry or fear, Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Because he will give you everything you need, not only to survive, but to thrive as his treasured child. God created you to be an extreme survivor, and he's with you no matter what the condition is. So I am having my littles practice their hand motions for our memory verse for the week, which is Ephesians 4 verse 32. We are working on a gentleness challenge right now, and so we are all about Ephesians chapter 4 right now, and I find that the hand motions really do help my younger kids memorize the verses. I do not um, push my older boys to do this. Sometimes I'll do it with the littles just to get them into it, but it is really not necessary for them, so I really focus on my youngest three for this part of it. We had planned to do the summer yoga, which is really just stretches that are like some kind of ocean creature. And since the littles were off playing, I just did some basic stretching with my older two boys and really just trying to focus on making sure we're taking care of our bodies and getting more into the habit of doing this regularly. All right, you guys, so we're getting ready to start our nature club lessons. And I was gonna make my six-year-old come over with us, but she is playing in the mud kitchen. And this is why I don't often do day in the lives because we kind of do our own thing over here. I don't want to stop her from doing this with her younger siblings, like being wild and free and living her best life, doing recipes in the mud kitchen to do nature study club when we can talk about bears later. So I'm gonna let her take these mud kitchen recipes and have fun with her siblings. She's gonna lead the recipes. So the second one says one and a half cups of small stones. And you can change any of these recipes the way you want. Where's one and a half cups on your measuring cup? So that's a half a cup, where's a cup? Right there. So you're gonna have to do one whole cup and then you'll have to do a half a cup and that will give you one and a half cups. Are you gonna do water instead? No, it says water. Oh, okay. Water's your first ingredient? Are you getting some stuff for your recipes? Yep. Those Mud Kitchen recipes I created, so if you are interested in those or any kind of summer mega bundle, the summer mega bundle releases today at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There are countless summer resources, so many different topics, so many different age levels, and I will link them down below, but it won't go live until 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Definitely make sure to check it out, though there are so many things in there. So I'm gonna get started with my older two boys, and if the younger ones jump in, that's totally fine, but I'm not stressing it. Okay, you guys, so 
We're gonna be talking about bear dens today. This is our second month of Nature Study Club and we have been loving it so far. Anytime there's anything with readings involved, I typically have the three of us take turns. It helps us not have to do all the reading and then also keeps everyone engaged in what we're doing. I love that my six-year-old made her way over on her own because she was interested and not because I made her come over for lessons. I know this is not everyone's style, but I really like them to have this freedom where possible. Even my two-year-old and three-year-old made their way over as well. That's what a bear den looks like. Okay, Juju, do you want to cut this bear out? Okay, get your scissors ready. Okay, and cut right here. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Open them up again. What makes the sun and cut. Go Good, keep going. One more. Tonight, what's it dreaming of? I wonder. Go ahead and cut. Good girl. No, now you need your glue. Can time. you put glue on the back of it first? Go ahead, put glue on the back. Hey. Yeah. So put glue on the back. Put your scissors down and put glue on the back. Put your scissors down and put glue on it. Okay, and put it in the den. Can you put the bear in the den? Oh, the bear's upside down. Do we want the bear upside down? Or should we turn it around? Okay, can you turn it around? Yeah, you go, Jackie. Good job. Okay, so do we want to cut out the bees and put them in there too? Yeah. So at this point, everyone is working on their independent parts of the nature study. So we have the family style portion where we learn about that day's topic together. And then they have different activities at their level within their individual workbooks. So Sethi and Juliana, my two and three year old, are working on cutting and pasting. My older boys are working on bear classification. My daughter is doing bear anatomy and bear den anatomy, but everyone is learning and connected to the same topic at their level. So I just love family style learning. I love unit studies, highly recommend Nature Study Club. Okay, so we finished our lesson and they finished their individual workbook pages. Now what they have to do is they actually have a build a bear den STEM activity and they're going all out to like the scrap wood pile in the back corner of our yard and they are going for it and trying to build a bear den to scale. This will be our last thing that we do before like free time, lunch, story time and nap time for the youngest and then we'll do afternoon lessons. Everyone is sort of having free time for right now. My boys are downstairs playing drums. It sounds like they've stopped for the moment. Littles are washing hands and I'm just making them a lunch board for my three youngers. And then we're gonna do a nap time story time. And then my older two will kind of fend for themselves with lunch today. They'll be cleaning up the kitchen, having lunch, and then working on their math while I'm getting, there it is. Where I'm, while I'm getting nap time and story time done, and then we'll regroup together um, for for afternoon lessons, and I'm sure they'll get in some pool time. What makes the sun go to sleep every night, and what's it dreaming of? I wonder. I'm gonna do a story with this little sleepy girl. 
I'm gonna put some sleepy eyes in the diffuser for her. My six-year-old and three-year-old are playing outside, so a lot of times I do have them come up at least for the story, but once again, I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow and let them go and not worry about wrangling them in here because it is very rare that my three-year-old naps and he's the one that I would want to nap. Whereas my six-year-old sometimes falls asleep and I actually don't want her to nap because I need to do one-on-one -on -one lessons with her and other things, so. But here's this guy. Are you here for story time? Yeah. Yay, I'm so glad you decided to come up. So that's the beauty sometimes of not forcing them all the time to do things because then sometimes they want to do it on their own. By which child? You were tired? That's why you came up? Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you did, because now you can get some rest. Do we want to do Miriam at the river, rainbow fish, or I grew with you? Um, Which one? Or do we want to look at some of the shapes? Which one? Can you pick one? Or this one. All right, we'll look at all the shapes. Good. Where's the oval? Good job. Where's the rectangle? So Sethi found this book on the side of the bed down the crack. So this is one of our favorites and we're going to read this one. I'm actually so glad he found this book because I just love how it connects creation to our creator. And as soon as we are done, I will turn on Pandora on my phone to play some worship because that usually helps my youngest get to sleep rather quickly. Back downstairs, my oldest is working on his math with Nicole the math lady. My 11 year old is washing some dishes and my six year old is doing some independent work. And then I'll work with her one on one on her math for a little while while my 11 year old goes outside to work on his math and hang out with his little brother. Okay, so everyone has completed their math and their independent work. They are getting in the pool because it's super hot out. They're about to get in right now, there they are. And I am going to set up for afternoon lessons. We are continuing with our ocean unit study. If you missed the video where I showed how I pulled together my own ocean unit study, I'll try to remember to link that down below or up above. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try to pull out a knowledge crate activity for us to do today along with our ocean studies. And we're gonna focus mostly on whales today. We're also gonna be tying in our book study from the Summer Reading Club by For the Love of Homeschooling, which you can still grab it through the end of summer. So I'll put the link down below for that as well. We are loving it. There are so many books and so many book studies in there. We will never get to them all over the summer. So we'll use tons of them throughout the school year next year. And so we're reading The Whale and we're going to do the rest of some of the chapter one activities and then start the chapter two activities if you've been around for a while or over on my Instagram, you know that I really love to set up invitations to learn. I myself am a visual person, so I love to have all different engaging learning materials set out for them so that when they come in, they are interested and excited about what we're learning. All right, I got all set up, but we're not quite, I love you, Sethi, but we're not quite ready to go in. So we're gonna do our read aloud that we didn't get to earlier today. I'm gonna hang out with my feet in the pool. If they wanna float, they can. If they wanna sit on the deck, they can. And we're just gonna read. And then in a little bit, we'll head inside, do a little bit of our ocean unit study. And then it'll probably be time to start dinner. Chapter 31, Macon whooped and hollered as they approached Stone House. Okay, I'm giving them a few more minutes to finish up outside. So I'll just show you guys really quick what I have set up for them when they come in. So we are focusing on mostly chapter two, which is about the beluga whale that shows up in chapter two of the book, The Whale. I have the big book of the blue open to this page and that's Ocean Anatomy. I have some books and magazines that focus on whales. And then this was from the Knowledge Crate. And if you saw my video about the ocean unit that I put together, um, you would recognize this. So these creatures came in there and then 
These cards that are more detailed came in the um, school age crate, and then these cards that are a little bit shorter were in the preschool crate. So for my older two boys, I will have them pick at least one of these and the matching figure, and then they will add that to their notebooking. Um, we've been doing notebooking for this unit, and so they'll add that there. And then for my six-year-old, she will choose one and use this because it's, it'll be easier to read for her. For my three-year-olds, I just have some whale matching here, and then I have some count and clip cards, and then I just have some posters for them to use for notebooking. So everyone will do the anatomy of a whale. Um, they'll either do one of the sheets that came right in the unit, which I should have right here for the beluga whale. So they'll either do it like this and then paste that into their notebook, or if they wanna do a different one, then they will just sketch it and label it that way. And then there's like a page or two that we're gonna finish up from the chapter one portion of the guide. So that is pretty much it. We're keeping it fairly simple today. And then by that time, it will be time to start getting ready for dinner. In a lonely lighthouse, there, so listen to the details, guys, for place, time, mood, and senses. In a lonely lighthouse, there lived a family of animals who were, in fact, not lonely at all. Their lighthouse stood on top of a cliff of sharp rocks beside the sea. And it Okay, so go ahead and write that, Jean. You can write on an island. So you need a pencil, honey. So that's where it takes place on an island. So go ahead and write that. Justice and Jackson, these words are for you. Gia, you can color your lighthouse while I tell them. Forlorn. Okay. Vigorously. Okay. Mended. Solitary. Enormous okay. or splendid? Are there any of those knows. that you don't, you can't, so it needs to be forlorn. Forlorn is kind of like a I really think it's important to make curriculum our own. So instead of having my boys do all these vocabulary words that are listed, I'm only having them do any that they don't already know so that it's not a waste of our time. All right, so go to your next clean page, you guys, and this is what you're gonna do. All right, so you are gonna choose one of these creatures in here. You're gonna choose the actual creature that goes along with the card. You're gonna sketch it. You're gonna read through everything on the card, and then you're gonna write this stuff at the top, and then choose two facts to write as well. Got it? Uh -huh. sure. All right, so these guys are finishing up their last activity from our ocean study from today. It's time to start cooking dinner. So I am gonna end this day in the life here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know. I will try to remember to link all of the curriculum and activities that we use today down in the description box below. If you're new here, I would love if you'd introduce yourself in the comments. If you're not already following me over on Instagram, you can follow me there at rooted underscore home life. I would love to connect with you over there as well. I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. And until next time, stay rooted. Are there any bears in the den? No. Are there any cubs in that den? There's no dens? No. Isn't that the den? There's no dens. <laughs> is, that your bear, is that your bear house? Your bear den? I want to get into it. What is, what is, what is?